This evening, we are going to be uh, dealing with a topic that in the in the book of John that people sometimes have difficulty with, and it often has to do with the fact that we typically read the book of John and every other book for that matter in chunks. We say, okay, we're going to turn to John chapter five. And we'll read John chapter 5. We're going to read John chapter 9 today. Read John chapter 9. John chapter 12. We rarely sit down and read an entire book in one sitting. And considering the length of these books are not usually, especially in the New Testament, are not usually that long, we do ourselves a disservice if from time to time we do not do that. Uh, it, it's uh, with the Gospels. You say, well, they're they're uh, the shortest one is 16 chapters. That's the Book of Mark. Then you got John with 20, Luke with 24, and Matthew with 28. And you say that's a lot of reading. But when you actually sit down, and if you were to give yourself an hour, I'll bet you you could read most of it. It's not like the Gospels are usually teaching deep things using hard words. It's usually a lot of narrative, and you don't have to absolutely grasp everything the first time but if you sit down and read it maybe how it was read when it was first received some of these difficulties might go away and so the topic tonight is did jesus come to judge the world or did he not come to judge the world and so let's get our passages we're just going to read them uh, and then we'll come back to discuss them so Passages in the book of John that appear that Jesus came to judge the world are John chapter 5, verse 22, and give that to Naomi, and John chapter 9, verse 39, which we'll give to Tammy. John chapter 5, verse 22. For the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son. Okay. So, again, this, this appears to be saying, okay, all judgments given to the Son. John chapter 9, verse 39. And that will be Tammy. And Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may be made blind. All right, this one seems like a little bit more uh, clear, clear cut. The John chapter 5 said all judgments given to the Son. You might be able to come along, well, maybe that judgment's not now, maybe it's late. Well, John chapter 9, there's no, there's no walking around the edges here. For judgment, I came into this world. Jesus says it. And yet, if you back up uh, a couple chapters, you go ahead a couple chapters, and you get a seemingly different message. Bill, you want to get John chapter 3, verse 17. Okay, the word judge is not in that verse. But what word might take its place? Yeah. Condemn. Because judgment yeah. often brings with it condemnation. And so uh, that, that passage at least gives the idea, okay, God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world, but to save it. Let's go to give Henry John chapter 8, verse 15. You judge according to the fish, and you judge not the flesh. Yeah. I, yeah, I judge no one. Oh, Jesus is speaking there, those are red letters. I judge no one. Now let's get John chapter 12, verse 47, and that'll be Naomi. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. 
So just like John chapter 9, which is pretty explicit, John chapter 12 is pretty explicit. I did not come to judge the world. We could just sit there and compare John chapter 9 and John chapter 12, and you say, well, hold on a second. Jesus said in John chapter 9, I came to judge the world. Jesus said in John chapter 12, I did not come to judge the world. What do we have to do in order to perhaps try to answer this question? What's the first thing we should do? Instead of trying to tackle the entire problem ourselves, what should we do first? Maybe, maybe we let something else tell us what we're talking about. Maybe we go ahead and read the other verses that go around. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, read, uh, read at least the coming passages. Because what is the definition of the word judge? Uh, in your own words. Like, what, what does that entail? Okay, so one who one who condemns you or or uh, or, or uh, acquits you, acquits you or convicts you, one who passes down sentence, are all every time you see the word judge, is it always in, used in the same exact con, context? Is it always talking about final judgment? Whenever we see the word judge in scripture, is it always referring to final judgment? No, no, it's not always. Men and women make judgments all the time, but I'm not condemning anyone to heaven, nor am I preaching anyone into he or not condemning anyone to hell, nor am I preaching anyone into heaven. I, but I make judgments all the time on whether something's right or wrong from Scripture for myself, mm -hmm. and when I'm teaching others, you, you, have, we go to Scripture and we make judgments. They should be God's judgments. But those are judgments nonetheless. But since judgment is not always referring to the judgment day, that should temper uh, our thinking when it comes to, okay, what judge or judgment is being referred to? And for that, we need the context. So, okay, what type of judgment is Jesus talking about? Because the book of John when it comes to the chapter breaks in the book of John, the chapter breaks are a lot better than in some books. Some books, the chapters break an entire context. The book of John does a pretty good job in many places of not breaking the context up. John chapters 12 through 19 all occur in the same night, so you do have to be careful when it comes to that. But John chapter 6 is mostly its own context. John chapter 5 is mostly its own context. John chapter 4 is mostly its own context. Same with chapter 8 and 9. And, and so when we understand that, we're like, okay, he's talking to different people here. The topic of conversation is different. And so perhaps... We're dealing with a different type of judge. Let's go back to John chapter 5. Let's deal with Jesus came to judge the world. Our verse was verse 22, for the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son. Now, let's back up to verse 18. Uh, and I'd like us to read through verse 29. Uh, and let, let's figure out what we're talking about. We'll do two verses each. No, we'll do three verses each. We'll start with Tammy, we'll go to Bill and across, 18 through 29. Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but he also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. 
and he will show him greater works than these, that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to who is evil. The Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son. But all should honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. We also measure the name of the city. He who hears my word and believes in who send me as everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is, and the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has found the Son to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice, and come out, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. What is the overall issue that Jesus is speaking about here in this section of John? What's the problem he's facing? Why? You're right, but why? What was Jesus claiming? Yeah. They thought to, sought to kill him not only because he was breaking the Sabbath, which was the earlier part of John 5, but because he made himself equal with God. And there are consequences to being equal with God. If he's equal with God, if he is God, you have to listen to him. Now, what is Je how is Jesus going about claiming to be God in this section? He's, he's, he talks a lot about authority. What what's he talking about? How how's he how does he make that comparison? Well first he mentioned twenty one is the father raises the dead gives life to the son of the Yeah. And 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 he did that very literally too. Like as far as Jesus raised the dead. But of course, figuratively he gives life to men and women through his death on the cross. So the Father gives life, the Son gives life. He he said whatever uh, I don't do anything of my own accord. And that's important. Jesus always claimed that the Father's authority was superior. But only do what the Father what I see the Father do, I do. That's what he says in verse 19. And that's important that we realize that the Son He's saying, the Father has authority. And he's given it to me. And the way you know he's given it to me is because I do what the Father does. The Father gives life, I give life. If, uh, if the Father does good works, I do good works. If you don't honor the Son, what does that mean? You're not honoring the Father either. And that's true even when it comes, even if you think of an earthly example. If a son comes in by the authority of his father, say, say you have a business, and the father owns the business, but the son is put in charge of some of the day-to-day -day affairs. And he comes down to the lower workers and says, you know, you need to do that. And they come along, well, who made you boss? My father did. And they don't respect you. If they don't respect you, they don't respect the father who sent you. In other words, they don't respect the owner. Well, Jesus is saying the same thing. You say you honor God the father. And yet, you see the works of the father in me, and you do not honor me. Because you do not honor me, 
who do not honor the Father. In verse 22, in this context, what is the judgment we're talking about? When you take a look at the overall context. Explain. Well, speaking about honor, but then you have to jump into yeah. verse 24. Okay, well, jump into verse 24. We can come back to it. Um, just the fact that Jesus said, He who hears my word, and is a full of everlasting life, so I shall not come to judgment. So it Okay. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily. Yeah. Like as far as the word is what judges, and it's the words of Jesus. So in a sense, he is the judge. But when you think about it, all the way through the scriptures, Jesus is depicted as the judge of the living and the dead. We all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account. For what we have done in the body, whether good or evil. Second Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verse 10. And so when we stand before Christ, are we standing before the Father? Yeah, we are. Let's make no mistake. Uh, the Father, Christ and the Father are one. In, the, in other words, Christ isn't going to give a judgment on the Father. is on the court of appeals. So, no, 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 Jesus, you got that wrong. No, Christ's words... We'll, which we'll get to in a verse in chapter 12 in a few moments. Uh, it goes directly into your thought here about the words of Jesus. But the judgment here is final judgment. And so that's what we have to remember about John chapter 5. When, when Jesus didn't come to judge the world, which we'll deal with in a moment. It, when Jesus came the first time, what was final judgment... What followed his death, burial, and resurrection? No. And so the judgment in John chapter 5, we must realize, is in the context of final judgment. When Christ comes again, he's going to come for final judgment. Well, we can't apply the words of Jesus didn't come into this world to judge to John chapter 5, because John, Jesus isn't referring to what he came for that time. He talks about what he's coming for next time. And it is. You have to believe the words. And I do believe Jesus is talks about judgment. You see in verse in verse 29, the resurrection of life and the resurrection of judgment. Jesus' point is, is using judgment in a, in a pretty bad way. We sometimes use judgment, oh, quit and convict. In this context, judgment appears to be only conviction. If you, if you stand before and you're judged, you're judged wicked. But if you receive God's grace, you've believed in Jesus and done what he said, you're going to receive everlasting life even though you deserved death. You deserved judgment. But because you obeyed God in faith, you receive everlasting life through God's grace. So, John chapter 5 is not talking about Jesus' first coming. It's talking about Jesus' second coming. Let's go to John chapter 9. Let's do the same thing. 39, verse 39 said, Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world that those who do not see may see, and those who, may become, so who see may become blind. This one seems a little bit more clear cut. We're not talking about final judgment, but let's see. Uh, we got to back up. And I'm going to have to tell the beginning of the story because we don't have time to read the entire chapter. Jesus in this context is, uh, remember, he's healed the man who was born blind from birth. And the disciples asked the, or sorry, the, uh, yeah, the disciples asked the question, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus had to tell them, it was neither this man who sinned nor his parents 
He said, but the works of God may be displayed in him. Now, I don't believe Jesus is saying here that God made him blind so Jesus could make him unblind. I don't believe that's what he's saying. But he is saying it wasn't sin that made him blind. But because he was born blind, the works of God can be made manifest in him. Of course, that got Jesus into trouble uh, because uh, later on, if I'm not mistaken, uh, did he do this on the Sabbath again? Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, verse, 14. verse 14. I knew it had to be something to do. Yeah, it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So again, we're dealing with the, the Pharisees' understanding of the Sabbath day and his anger for this. I think this is a third time in this book he has healed someone on the Sabbath. And so uh, it's at least the second, because John chapter 5 also had the Sabbath, but I think this is the third time that he has done something on the Sabbath. And the Pharisee said, this man does not keep the Sabbath. And how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there were, but like as far as, they, they're confused. They're confused because they recognize if this man does signs, yet he's breaking the Sabbath, how can God let him do that? That should, if they had an open heart, lead them to the answer that, they, that he wasn't breaking the Sabbath. That would be the conclusion that should be drawn is that he wasn't breaking the Sabbath. Otherwise, God wouldn't allow him to do these things. But the Jews did not believe that he had been blind in the beginning they had to call his parents say was he born blind in other words they were trying to come up with an excuse as to why uh, how jesus could have done this well maybe jesus tricked us maybe this man wasn't born blind after all maybe he was faking it and his parents says we know that this is our son and that he was born blind they didn't know how he saw but they did know, uh, uh, but he said, you can ask him on that part of the question how he sees. But let's pick up at verse 24. We'll do three verses again. Uh, oh, I think it's Tammy again to start. We'll read through the end of the chapter, verse 41. No, verse 24. Also, Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you 
Okay. Now, what's the judgments being spoken of here? Is it final judgment? No. What's the judgment Jesus is speaking of here? I think it has to do with what Bill said earlier, but in a more concrete sense. Yeah. The judgment Jesus is, is saying, the signs that Jesus did, that's what the judgment is. Are you going to believe in me because of what you saw? They are they they have a problem here. They can't wrap their minds around how Jesus could heal this man and yet be a Sabbath breaker, a sinner. They labeled the man a sinner. They kicked his parents out of the synagogue too, I think. Labeled Jesus a sinner. And yet they still have this man who was born blind that can now see. And they can't comprehend how to square that circle. Because they are blind. Now, Jesus is a lot of play on words here. Who are the blind that Jesus it, it makes to see? Who are those who are blind that Jesus makes to see? There's one literal and one figurative. The man's the literal, the man's the literal one. And the others are hurt, um, yeah. yeah. They were in sin. They were blind. But now they see because they believe the words of Jesus. They, ju they, they judged what Jesus did, and Jesus' words judged them and convicted them. Everyone is a sinner before God. But, and so in that sense, you're blind. The words of Jesus judge you that way. However, what you do with those words determines whether or not you will see, because those same words have the ability to allow you to see. Now, if you come along and say, you know, I see. What, what, is G, what did Jesus say? You're blind, and your guilt remains. Because you haven't recognized that you are blind. You, or that you, like I said, you... You think you see. You think you see. I'm, I, I'm righteous. I'm righteous. Yet, they're denying the works of Jesus. How can they say that they are righteous and deny the works of Jesus, which are the works of God? So, Jesus is using, I am the light of the world, and, and this blind man who sees to teach a deeper lesson about being blind and seeing. We are blind without God, and we're, Christ's words judge us that way, but they also provide us the way to life, to, to see. But if we are going to be blinded by our own arrogance, by our own predispositions, but at the same time claiming we see, we're going to walk off into that ditch. We can convince ourselves, like have, you ever, have you ever run into someone who's so stubborn that they will deny the truth even if it's right in front of them? Yeah, the Pharisees are this stubborn person. They've been told you're blind. You can't see. Oh, no, 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 I can see, I can see. Jesus is saying you can't see. You can't just make it so. You can't see. So this judgment's not final judgment. 
this type of judgment Jesus did come into the world to do. To separate the righteous from the unrighteous by his words. Same thing as John chapter 5, but in John chapter 5 we're talking about future judgment. Verse John chapter 9, we're talking about the judgment of that day and age. But it's not final judgment, so it's not the same judgment. Now let's go to John chapter 3. These ones will go a little quicker because we've already talked about the two types of judgment. So now let's just figure out what type of judgment we're talking about. John chapter 3, uh, we will read verses 16 through 21. Uh, we will start, who, la who read last? I think Bill did, right? So we'll do Henry, we'll do two verses each, 16 through 21. Two, please. Yeah, two for each. The Father so now with the word, that if he give his only begotten Son, that of whoever believe me in him, should not have perished, and have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son in this world to condemn the world, and that the works to the king may be seen. Whoever believes in him is, is whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. See how the book of John starts to come together and you start seeing the same things over and over and over again. They started in John chapter 1, but you start seeing this, this light and darkness, judgment, if God didn't, when God did not, why did God send Jesus into the world? When, why did God send Jesus into the world? So people would believe in him and not perish. So this judgment, if God didn't send Jesus to judge the world, what judgment would that have been had he sent it? If I'm not being confusing. If God had sent Jesus to judge the world, if verse 17 said, it didn't say for God did not send Jesus to judge the world. If, if, if that verse said for God did send his son to judge the world, what type, what, what judgment would that have been? Would that have been final judgment or uh, judgment of that day? Final. That would have been final judgment. He is sending Jesus the next time to judge the world. So in verse 17, he didn't send Jesus to judge the world, but then John turns around and talks about that judgment. What's that judgment going to consist of? According to verse 19. It's between two opposites. Light and darkness. Whoever believes in Jesus is not condemned. They're in the light. But he who does not believe is condemned already. They're condemned already because they are in sin. They are in darkness. The world loves the darkness, but those who believe in Christ love the light. And it will be those in the light who are, who are saved. So again, in John chapter 3, it's almost a dual purpose. You get both of them in that chapter. God didn't send Jesus for final judgment, but he did come to prepare for final judgment. He did come to separate the light from the dark. And those who believe in him are how it is that separating line. That's how judgment is going to be based. So again, we have to know what judgment we're talking about. Let's go to John chapter 8. Before we run out of time, we've got about, about 8 minutes. John chapter 8. Verse 15 was our verse. Uh, you judge according to the flesh, I judge no one. Let's skip up to verse uh, verse 12. 
uh, and uh, read through verse... Oh, this one's a tough one. Verse 20. We'll read through verse 20. Uh, we'll start with Bill. Uh, three verses each. Uh, then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said to him, You bear witness of yourself, the witness is not true. Jesus answered and said to them, Even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true. For I know where I have been from and where I am going. But you do not know where I have come from and where I am going. And the Jewish child shall be into his flesh, may judge him the Lord. And again, if I do judge, my judgment is true. For I am not unknown, but I am in ways that find the person. This is also written in the law, and the testimony of the true man is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. They said to him, Therefore, where is your father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. These words he spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, but no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. Judgment, final judgment, or judgment when Jesus in Jesus' time? When he says, you judge according to the flesh, I judge no one. The final judgment or not? No. Now, what were they judging? What was the judgment actually in this, in this uh, context? And, according to verse 13, and his witness wasn't true. That was their judgment. How were they judging? They were judging according to the flesh. And to Jesus, how did Jesus prove that his testimony was true? What did he say? In verse 14. And that they didn't. He says, I know where I came from. I know where I was going. He says, even if I do bear witness of myself, my testimony is true because I knew where I came from. I know where I'm going. You judge according to the flesh. I don't judge that. That's not my judgment. I'm not judging according to the flesh. I know where I came from. I know where I'm going. You judge according to the flesh. I don't judge that way. Yet, even if I do judge, not only was my witness true, even if I do witness, my judgment is true because I, it is not I alone who judge, but the Father who sent me. Both of them. Jesus was sent of the Father. Fathers, we read further down, if we read further down, Jesus is witnessed by the Father. Jesus, Jesus again, didn't come to finally judge the world here. But the judgment here is about his witness, whether his witness was true. The Pharisees were judging according to the flesh. That's not how Jesus judges. Jesus doesn't judge that as well. He said, in the law it is written that the testimony of two people are true. I'm the one who bears witness about myself, and the Father bears witness. Two witnesses. If you have two witnesses, it is true. That's what the law of Moses said, but the Pharisees were judging according to the flesh. Not final judgment in John chapter 8. It agrees with the entire book so far. We talked about I am the light of the world. We keep seeing this light and darkness. Comparison all the way through. Now let's come to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Verse 47 was our verse. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge them. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. Let's back up to verse 44. 
uh, and read through verse 50. We'll start with Tammy, two verses each. All right. In verse 47, is the judgment final judgment? Yes, it is. I didn't come for final judgment. I came to save the world. This time I came to save the world. However, what was it that was going to judge mankind? His word, which goes with what we've been saying all along. Christ didn't come the first time for final judgment, but there was a judgment he came for. It's his words that he spoke that bore witness of him. That was what was going to divide the light from the darkness. Whoever was on the light was blind and now saw and would receive eternal life. Those who were in the dark, they loved the things of the world. They judged according to the flesh. They thought they saw, but they were blind. And the words that Jesus spoke was going to judge them at the last day. We're all going to be judged by the words that Jesus spoke. Do we obey them? Do we believe them? Or not? And that's the point. I hope you've seen tonight why reading books in context, even if we read them all, all together, we've seen a common theme through the book of John just by sitting and reading through it. Light and darkness were in every passage that we talked about this evening. All of them. Now, the book of John is, is, more, is about more than light and darkness. It's about the deity of Jesus, too. But this is how Jesus is framing it all the way through. It's a consistent message. And if we read the message in the context, we know that there's two types of judgment. There was the judgment of Jesus' words. We will be judged by that, but there was final judgment. Jesus didn't come for final judgment the first time. He will the second time. There is no contradiction. But when we grab five verses... And decide just to, to say judgment means judgment, final judgment all the time. Then we wind up with a contradiction that we can't answer. Read the book. And it goes away. Any other thoughts? Yeah. But it gave them an opportunity to be saved too. Like we, we find later that the Pharisees, some of the Pharisees actually do become believers in Jesus. And uh, we see that in the book of Acts. Uh, they, they had some of their problems, but we see that in the book of Acts. That some of the Pharisees did become believers in Jesus. And yet if Jesus had smote them dead right then and there, they wouldn't have had that opportunity. He came to die on the cross. But his words will judge us. And that's the point we need to remember. I'm not ashamed to own my Lord.